Yeah, I'm Sean. I'm Birch. And here we are again. Fair listener. <laughs> <laughs> lovely stuff. Yes. So this time we're going to talk about a lovely fellow. Mm. Lovely young, young chap. Uh, quite up and coming in the world of politics. Yeah. Uh, his name's Winston Churchill. Winnie Churchy. Winnie Churchy, as the kids are calling him these we days. Wee Winnie Churchy. <laughs> Wee Bonnie Winnie Churchy. He's known f- world over for his catchphrase. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was wondering <laughs> how long it was going to take before one of us mentioned. Just looking at the computer. Um, one minute and 14 seconds, I think. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. How did he get co-opted into doing that? Well... I mean, of course, uh, he has uh, since passed away uh, quite a few years ago. So he's literally just kind of like a, a ghost uh, at this point, just kind of finding bodies to inhabit. Right. And it just so happened that for a brief stint on the television, he inhabited the body of a, a toy bulldog. <laughs> well, yeah, um, that makes a lot of sense, actually. That makes a lot of sense. What other reason could there be for no. him having uh, been called Churchill? No, it makes no sense. And... Um, you say a brief stint. I mean, those ads were on for about 20 years, weren't they? That's true. Yeah, I guess. So where do you want to start? Let's get the ball rolling. Well, I guess uh, we should start by uh, mentioning that he was, in fact, Prime Minister. Of? Um, hang on. Let me just Google it. England. England. Oh, okay. Not Great Britain? Uh, might have done that as well. To some extent. <laughs> yeah, he lived a long life, Sean. <laughs> yeah. And how many times was he Prime Minister, James? Twice. He was Prime Minister twice. Well done. You've done some research. For once, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, and he was actually... A bulldog, lost. yeah. <laughs> yeah, and th- that was that was his campaign slogan. Is, uh... <laughs> I'm a bulldog, vote for me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Did you know that in 1964 was when he, when he stepped down as an MP hmm. due to having a stroke? The Beatles were running about. And uh, he was a very big fan, and uh, he had their first LP, on LP, uh, or vinyl, as it's sometimes known. And uh, he actually petitioned to be in the band. He tried to, he tried to actually uh, make it an act of parliament, right? That he was going to be the fifth Beatle before, um, you know, George Martin could get in there. Right, I see. That makes a lot of sense. Like his uh, acts in parliament to try and get there eight days a week rather than seven, yeah, for yeah. instance. So that does make a heck of a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, it does. Was, uh, now, you mentioned uh, quite swiftly after um, him having a stroke that he was a big fan of the Beatles. Now, was, were the two instances uh, linked at all? Uh, did he like maybe perhaps meet them once like by chance and he was the first time seeing them and it kind of shocked him? Yeah, he had real Beatlemania. Um, Beatle fever. Right. Beetle um, smallpox. God. Uh, Beetle diphtheria. He had all of them. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, and um, actually, ha- so having m- met them, they all went into overdrive and uh, completely overrun his system. And he was d- d- way his immune system was weighed laced by the Beatles. They uh, o- laid they o- to waste. They overran his system. Yes. So not only was he a bulldog, he was a robot. <laughs> Yeah, it was a, a robo bulldog, um, like Ro- uh, bulldog. like um, Poochie, the electronic dogs you could get in the nineties. Oh yeah, he <laughs> was very much like a precursor to that. <laughs> it's just there's just so much that I, I never knew about this this character. I mean, we only ever think of him as like uh, a guy in black and white pictures giving people the two fingers. But yeah, uh, there's so much more to the man. F you, he used to say with yeah. his fingers up. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Bottle of brandy in hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he was a robot. He was a robot. But he was actually built during the second phase of the Manhattan Project. Right. Uh, nuclear bomb, first phase. Second phase, Winston Churchill, robot. Ro- I mean, the timeline doesn't quite add up there, but um, they also invented a time machine, so that explains that. So don't worry about it, don't look into it. There's no need to look into it. No, I trust your judgment. Yeah, good, I'm glad. He was a bit of a looker, wasn't he? 
Yeah, you reckon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's my type, actually. <laughs> or if I was uh, 40, born 50... No, that's not... What? No, enough. he would have been dead by that, <laughs> wouldn't he? Yeah, but if I was born 50 years ago, I could have yearned for him. Yeah, well, he would have had uh, he would have had a few more uh, issues at that point if he was uh, courting you. Yeah, I would have been courted by a zombie. Yeah, <laughs> and he but, would have but... been a zombie paedophile. <laughs> is what I was thinking. <laughs> Very good point. Yeah, he would have been a zombie paedophile, wouldn't he? Okay, well, say I was born um, 50 years before that. That's a total of 100 years. Yeah. So well, I was born 100 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> um, I'm sure we would have got on very well and possibly had a whirlwind romance, you know, an affair. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I mean, what uh, what were his uh, hobbies and interests? Drinking, Besides, yeah, brandy, what, yeah. Yeah, you can bond over that, I guess. Yeah, You get certainly. so drunk that, yeah, yeah. Um, he also liked the war. Yeah, he loved he loved he a good loved war. It, yeah, loved mm. a good war. That man mad for it. We fought in the First World War, and he won the Second World War. So single handedly, people seem to forget. Yeah, no, he did most of the fighting. Um, he just sort of they just used to uh, uh, drop him in with a parachute into the, behind enemy lines, mm. and pissed out of his head. He was just punching his way. <laughs> um, Giving everyone the fingers. Down the line, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fuck you. Yeah. And they used to run, didn't they? They used to cower in fear. <laughs> and this fat, pissed man <laughs> just with a cigar in his sw- mouth. Sw- swinging his fingers at them and, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> he used to say. Um, reminds me a lot of Jim Bowen, actually. <laughs> Winston Churchill and Jim Bowen. Of the, I think they're of the same ilk. I think, I think if you took the, both those men... You pick them up out of history, swap them around. Oh, I think they would have done just fine, both of them. Yeah. I think, but... first of all, Jim Bowen leading the nation in the wartime. No problems whatsoever. And I then, think they would have got, he would have gotten just fine. Yeah, and then Winston Churchill stood at the hockey giving questions to people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, just while we're doing the ad break here, I'm just going to count up the money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's my face? <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's a no, it would be a Jim Bowen's face on our money, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that doesn't work, actually. You'd have to, have to flip it round. <laughs> I would love a £5 note with Jim Bowen's face on it. Oh, I would. I'd love that too, actually. Oh, we, uh, we can dream. <laughs> yeah. a, a better world, an alternative world where Jim Bowen's on the, the £5 note. <laughs> Who would win in a fight, Winston Churchill or Winnie Mandela? Winnie Churchill or Winnie Mandela? Um, well, I don't know. Uh, he's quite a big guy, um, mm. Winnie Mandela. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. You know, the old switcher. <laughs> you got me with that. You got me with that. So I think it's anyone's game, really. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I think I think Churchill would be brutal. Yeah, I, he's, I an, th- he's an ex-soldier. He's probably got a lot of PTSD. It would be um, no holds barred, I think, with mm, him. Mm. I think my favourite Winston Churchill quote mm. is, I am fond of pigs. Dogs look up to us. Cats look down on us. Pigs treat us as equals. What? <laughs> well, I don't know. Is he as tall as a pig? That's <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. He was... Have you not seen the photos? I think um, in a kind of S- S- Stalin-esque move, they um, altered all the photos afterwards to make him appear like he was the size of a normal human being. He was actually the same height as a pig. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> that just makes everything so much more impressive. But hang on, you look up to a, a dog looks up to you. Mm, it's a riddle. Cat it's looks like, down on you. Yeah, it's a riddle. I guess if he's like sat on the sofa and you're kind of like... A bit lower down, he might look look down on you. But a pig facing you perfectly, yeah, head on, yeah. is what we take from that quote. Absolutely. Now he liked brandy. Can we assume that this quote was perhaps uh, after one of his uh, drunken benders? Possibly. Have you seen any of those um, pictures of him riding a pig, um, just sort of swinging his hat about? Yeah, um, of course. Giving the fingers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was very fond of them. He loved the pig rodeo. Oh, oh, lo- oh yeah. Loved it. 
I think that's maybe what he meant when he called them equals. Is that they're both? It's like a partnership. It you is. Know? He's he's not um, riding the pig as much as the pig is being ridden by him. <laughs> yeah. No, he was he was one for pig rights. <laughs> if that's one thing that can be said about that man. One for pig rights. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, super group. We're gonna make a, a super group. Yeah. Now Winston Churchill has to be in the band. Yeah. And you got three others. Okay. Um, do it. Doesn't matter what Winston does, or is that part of the game? That's part of the game. You got to think okay. what he'd be best suited to. Uh, my immediate thought is he's going to be the bez of the group. Yeah. I quite like to see him um, peeled up, dancing around with maracas. Uh, maybe a bit of face paint, sort yeah. of glow paint, um, dancing around on stage. I'd like to see Winston Churchill doing that. Yeah, doesn't I've quite ever know where he is. Yeah. Just no, that he's having a good time. Ah, oh, absolutely, yeah. And that was Winston Churchill all over, really, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, he was always having a good time. So, yeah, Winston Churchill. Is there any parameters to this? Sort of world figures of history or... Yeah, no, just... Absolutely anybody. Whoever you think would make a good band. <laughs> okay. Um, we've got Winston. We've got Ainsley, Harriet. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put him on... He's also in a Bez role. Um, you've got like a dual Bez. It's in stereo. One, right. One on each side of the stage. Because um, it, it, it helps with this kind of symmetry that they're both bald. Right, yeah. No, um, I agree. I think, yeah. that's, I think that's important. And that look. add quite a nice dynamic having one play off against the other for like the most busyness. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Get a bit of competition, you know. Exactly. It's not good. It's not good for any one of them to have a monopoly on it. Um, that stifles competition. We want them to be quite active in their busyness and really kind of be going for it. So yeah, okay. Um, I think I quite like. Um, I'd like the horn section to be uh, Silvio Berlusconi uh, on saxophone and also Bill Clinton on saxophone. Right. Because Bill Clinton can actually play saxophone. He can. Silvio Berlusconi would need to play the kind of dirtiest instrument he could. I think that's a bit of sort of filthy saxophone, kind of careless whisper style. Hmm. Right. So that's that's your four, isn't it? Oh, sorry. Was it only has to be four? Yeah. So you've got two people playing brass instruments and you've got two people dancing, pilled up. <laughs> I don't, know what, I don't know what kind of uh, crowd they're going um, <laughs> right, to ring in. Well, a crowd of people like me. Oh, yeah. A crowd of like-minded individuals, I would hope. <laughs> um, no, I will say I forgot that there are only meant to be four of them. Okay, well, <laughs> if I remembered that, I probably wouldn't have. Because I was thinking, you said supergroup, and, you know, I, I just thought supergroup's got to have at least two of everybody. Yeah. So that's my band. Nice. Bill Clinton, Sylvia Berlusconi, uh, Ainsley Harriet, and Winston Churchill. Hmm. Uh, what about you? Come on. Well, I've got to have Winston Churchill in mind, haven't I? That's the yeah. Uh, that's the that's the game. Well, I think uh, he's a bit of a front man. Is uh, Winston? Oh yeah, I can see that. He's very good in front of crowds. Mm. Uh, very good giving those speeches. So maybe it could be some kind of like spoken word kind of band mm. with some music in the background. A bit like uh, Lou Reed's later stuff, where he's just kind of like talk singing. Yeah, he doesn't care anymore. Yeah, <laughs> he's given up. His best years of <laughs> long behind him. Uh, yeah, so I'll have him. I'll have uh, Jimi Hendrix um, on drums. Oh, on drums, interesting yeah. choice. Yeah. Yeah, he's getting. He got a bit too big for his boots. All the showboating with his guitar, just yeah. Like, yeah, setting it on fire, playing, playing it behind his back. head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I, I just think like, okay, cool your jets. See how you go with this. Cool your jets, Mister Hendrix. Exactly. Um, that that can be their first song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if I like that, but again, he deserves. It's my it. group. Well, yeah, know, I'm, fuck I'm the you, man. Hendrix. Yeah, <laughs> he's got no choice in this uh, in this scenario, right? So yeah, Winston Churchill, front man. Do you know who'd be really good on bongos? I know this is yours, mm. but I just sort of throw it out there. Um, Joseph Stalin, right? Fantastic bongo player, from all accounts. Um, even a lot of the people he erased from history used to say that he was a fantastic bongo player. That's true. Um, Although, I mean, we do hear about when there is tensions that arise within a band. Mm. I think Churchill and Stalin being in the same band, I I do think there might be mm. some kind of uh, palpable tension there, mm. which would uh, manifest itself. Palpatine tension. That's yeah. right. Uh, yeah, we, we don't want um, 
Well, throw that one out. That was my one. You know, I was kind of interrupting you. So, you know, you carry on. That's right. We'll have um, Abby Titmus. Oh, on... <laughs> interesting choice. <laughs> Whatever you're about to say. <laughs> on uh, on Abby the bongos. Tit- oh, on the bongos, right. Abby Titmus on the electric Titmus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. She'll play the electric Titmus, which is like two round instruments that she just hits. <laughs> so, I mean, I just realised it's very percussive at the minute. We've got bongo drums. I've got a main drum kit. Um, Wait, who was on drums? Oh, Hendrix. Jimmy yeah, Hendrix, yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. Oh, who else then? Um, so that's three, isn't it? So I've got one more. I would say Brian Blessed. We'll have him on the uh, the theremin. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, interesting choice. But, but he also has a lute in his hand as well. But he doesn't like, play it. He just plays. He... Well, he strums it. He doesn't like play any chords. But his right hand is just kind of like really hammering down on this medieval uh, lute. But it's it's like um like an open chord like he's not actually he's not actually playing any chords he's just all the notes are open yeah it's not tuned so it sounds pleasant i'll say that <laughs> um, well you it, can say that of most <laughs> music couldn't you <laughs> yeah so you got so it's very percussive uh spoken word um with some discordant lute and a, and a theremin yeah. and i think I, oh, i'm holding out that, that that he's a good theremin player i'm really i'm really holding on to the hope that he's, he's a good theremin he player he strikes me as someone who would be really good yeah. at the theremin and maybe like he, he's a bit of a showman he could play it with his beard perhaps he kind of like puts his beard in <laughs> yeah <laughs> moves his chin in and out <laughs> yeah. oh he's obviously a very determined man he's the man who's climbed mountains he's a man who's uh, he always gets stuck up them though doesn't he does he he never gets to the top of them well, as long as he gets down again, that's what matters, isn't it? Well, yeah, with the help of, like, the mountain services or whatever it is. The... <laughs> Nepalese Sherpa Brigade. Yeah, he calls them on his phone. I'm a bit stuck! <laughs> <laughs> so is James Mason, by the sounds of it. <laughs> James Mason. I'm stuck up a mountain. <laughs> Brian Bless is going to say, James Mason, I thought you died years ago. No. No, Brian Blessed, I'm not dead. I'm just James Mason stuck on a mountain. <laughs> I've been here all these years. Would I... you like a slice of peach? <laughs> what? what? I'd love one. <laughs> Why is he offering him a slice of peach? He's a generous man, Sean. <laughs> I forget. I always forget that. There's one thing I always forget about James Mason. Famed for his gem- generosity. Mm. Mm. Especially when on a mountain. Oh, yeah. Mountainside generosity. It's actually his middle name. Right, okay. Hypothetical, mm. right? You're Winston Churchill. I am. You're at 10 Downing Street. Mm. Got brandy in one hand, cigar mm. in the other. Yeah. It's late at night, you're worrying. At this point, you're just like, oh, am I going to win the, uh, what will be called the Second World War? Yeah. Um, or am I, are we going to lose? Oh, I'm a bit worried. I might get myself another brandy. Then... In from the front door, right? Yeah. Walks Adolf Hitler. Oh, that cheeky chap. I know. Doesn't wipe his feet. Oh. Just walks in. Bastard. Gives a little Hitler salute. To to himself? Yeah, he looks in the mirror. mirror. When when he looks, (laughs) he has to do it every time he looks in a mirror. Um, (laughs) And he comes in and he's like, Yeah, all right, Winston. He's like, What the hell are you doing in my house? Well, you're like, What the hell are you doing Mm, in my house? And he's like, All right, I have a a proposition for you, right? right? Okay. Now, so far I'm on board. Well, just wait till he listen to Hitler's yeah, proposition. Yeah, yeah. Now, Hitler's like he had a lot, for, had a lot to say for himself. Hitler, say so what we like about him. He had a lot to say for himself. So I'm interested to hear. So he comes in. He's like, right, Winston. Here's how it is. I'm laying my cards on the table now. I don't want this war to go on, yeah. and you don't want this uh, this war to go on anymore. There's people dying every day in the hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands. I mean, I, I'm not some psychopath. I don't want to. I don't want to see any more deaths any more than you do. So here's my proposition, right? The war ends tonight if you let me fuck you in the ass. Right. Well. Um, now, Winston Churchill. Now, in this scenario, um, I'm obviously Winston Churchill. Yes. But is you is have... this in the kind of um, disembodied astral projection kind of sense, well, in which I can um, leave Winston's body to get fucked by Hitler and kind of disappear back into the kind of time warp that I came from? This isn't Quantum Leap, 
where you're going from one leap to the next, you're kind of like, you have to think, right, what would Winston Churchill do? Oh, well, what would Winston do? Well, right. yeah, actually, yeah, we can we can take you out of this, I guess, yeah. We, right, I, yeah. I just thought it would be quite... Well, that's, that's fine. Just, to be honest, as long as I don't have to experience it myself... <laughs> yeah, um, but at that point... Fine. Yeah, but at that point, you could just go, yeah, you can fuck him in the ass, yeah, there's nothing <laughs> in it. You know? Um, is uh, Hitler and Winston... Who's going to be the postman? Who's going to be the letterbox? The, Hitler is, like, the uh, postman. Right. That's why there's... This kind of would Winston would he bend over and take it exactly? Um, bearing in mind this is someone he's not too fond of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd say that, would you? You'd say that about um, yeah, not his, big... his attitude towards Winston Churchill's attitude to Hitler. Yeah, not a big fan. Not a big fan. Okay. Um, I tell you what, sober. I say you know we go ah I'll fucking fight you on the beaches. I fucking Fight you wherever, mate. I'll fucking fight you right here. He's very much the Liam Gallagher of his day. Mm. But bearing in mind he's got brandy in his hand already, I'm going to have to say that he's probably off his tits. He'd be up for it. He'd yeah? Be, yeah, yeah, he'd be up for it. He's he pissed out of his head, mate. Finish the ball. Finish I guess. the ball. You wouldn't even remember it, I guess. Yeah, he'd be, he'd be fine. Next day, he's just like, kind of he's, like, reads the papers. He wakes up at about three o'clock. 3 p.m., yeah. He's just like, oh, fucking hell, my head. He looks at the paper. He's like, what? We won the war. Oh, my God. Oh, oh I can't walk. <laughs> I can't walk too well. A bit sore today. Yeah. Feeling sore, but strangely satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> were the roles reversed and uh, were it Churchill busted into Hitler's little bunker? How do you think that would have gone down? I don't know. I don't think Hitler would have taken it. Quite literally. <laughs> so Winston comes in and he's just like, oh, yeah, you can have England and all that stuff. I'm sick of it. The weather's miserable. <laughs> I can't, can't take it anymore. Yeah. And yeah, he gives him the same offer. Although, actually, no, I think he'd actually be offering his ass. I think, again, I think, again, he's the letterbox. What? Winston would go there and say, not only can you... <laughs> Not only can you have England and win the war, you can also <laughs> shag me in the arse. I think for for Hitler, a homophobe as he was, I don't think it would have, you know, I don't think that would have been any better a proposition than being on the receiving end of it. That's true. Yeah, he didn't like uh, didn't like gay people. So, yeah, I don't know. He probably, I don't know. It's one of those uh, moral quandaries that we'll be pondering for years to come, I think. Um <laughs> Are we teaching that in history? Yeah, yeah. Like maybe philosophy even, class. Um, I don't know if you've seen, but on Netflix, they're rebooting uh, the Magic School Bus. Mm. So with any luck, they'll kind of do a, a kind of Magic School Bus episode where they travel back in time and explore these issues in the depth that they truly deserve to be explored in. Yeah. Uh, I think that could be quite educational for the kids. The fictional ones on the show and uh, real life kids who are going to be watching. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Would it, would it go into quite the graphic? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, you need to know, I guess. Well, if you remember the original Magic School Bus, it was very graphic when it explored themes of sexuality. Mm. Oh, yeah, right. So, um, choose one legendary band and you're going to sub out the lead singer for Ch Winston Churchill. Who are you going to pick? Um... Well, let's have, let's have a think. Lead vocals. Lead guitar, if necessary, if it's a band that plays, you know, has lead or rhythm guitar as well. Right, so if the lead singer of the band, like, kind of plays guitar, he, he mm. immediately takes that amount on something with, like, piano or anything like that. Yeah. Um, if you're swapping them out for Chris Martin, he's going to play that piano. Right, okay. Um, no, I'd want him to be kind of, like, front and centre. He's very, kind of, like, he knows how to work a crowd. I uh, think he could front Joy Division. He's pretty fucking miserable. Yeah. Yeah, he could do that. I'd say that. Ugh, yeah. Yeah, I could, work. I could see that. Yeah. yeah. Love. Love will tear us apart. I would have probably gone for... Because he's very kind of like... I guess charismatic. And that. Mm. I would have probably gone for like Queen. Oh, uh, Freddie Mercury. Yeah, put yeah, Winston he... in that white vest. And the stonewashed jeans. Yeah. And the, yeah, the moustache. Yeah. God, yeah. And he looked really good in the uh, cross-dressing video. 
What was that? Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I, want I want to break, to break free. free. Oh, yeah. look good in that. Yeah, I'm not sh- sure he would have uh, been happy with dying of AIDS. But then I'm not sure Freddie Mercury was very happy to die of AIDS. No, that's yeah, but, yeah. But well, going back to yours, I don't think uh, Winston Churchill would be particularly happy about um, hanging himself in in a garage either. So. Uh, well, this is very taking a very, very <laughs> harrowing turn. <laughs> Suicide Nate. Ah, uh, yeah. Good stuff, though. Good stuff. It's all going in. It's all going in. Yeah, let's get it back on track. Um, yeah, the Carpenters. Uh, yeah, you front them. Yeah. Do you know what I'm thinking? Winston Churchill and the E Street Band. Yes. That would have worked. The boss. Yeah. yeah well, he was a bit of a boy. Well, he was a boss of uh, of uh, Parliament. Yeah, boss of, of, of sorts. Mm, boss of the country. Mm. Mm. Yeah, born in the USA. Born in the UK. Nailed it. Yeah, hungry heart. He was quite a fat guy, so he probably liked to eat mm. to his heart's content. Oh, do you know what? He'd have fucking nailed it with right said Fred. <laughs> <laughs> he could, in both roles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too sexy for my war. Too sexy for Dunkirk. <laughs> <laughs> he would have nailed it. Yeah. That's a beautiful image I have in my head, head now of him wearing like a slightly tight fitting shirt. Yeah. Just prancing around on a like, Here we nice go. music <laughs> video. Um, any other bands that Churchill would uh, kind of excel in? Um, Public Enemy. Oh, yeah. What is Flavor Flav or Chuck D? Yeah, boy. <laughs> right, so we've got. I tell you what, ah, this is it. This is the super group, right? Yeah. You've got um, Winston Churchill as Flavor Flav. Swap out Chuck D for the original Chuck D, Charles Darwin. Oh. Swap him in there. Ah, oh, you've got some great, and he's got a few things on his mind to say. He does. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. They're gonna have some killer tracks. <laughs> We've talked about uh, Winston Churchill, if you were going to sub out a lead singer in a band. Hmm. My next question would be, if you're going to sub out a, a lead actor in a film and put Winston Churchill in there instead, obviously The Godfather, him and Marlon Brando are basically interchangeable. Hmm. Uh, that's an obvious one. You don't need to mention that. Come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Except I think with the uh, the scene with the orange peels... I think he probably like swapped that for like uh, Kit Kat bars, mm-hmm. just because he liked yeah. his chocolate. Mad for it. All sticks of butter. <laughs> <laughs> Chasing his grandson <laughs> about a vineyard with uh, butter dripping out of his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tragically chokes on all the butter. Mm. Can't breathe. He puts some in his nose as well. <laughs> Don't know why. He was a bit mad towards the end. Yeah. And uh, yeah, ended up dying of butter overload. Mm. That's the way I want to go. Yeah. I'd love to see him in drag as Mrs. Doubtfire. That would be that'd nice. Be, that would be a good few laughs. Mm. Could we choose um, a, any films about Churchill? Or would that be cheating? How many films are there about Churchill? Do, do the Churchill adverts count? Yeah, they're those. Uh, I would consider those films about oh, he, Churchill. He played them himself, didn't he? Yeah, he that's, that's really him. Those are actually all from um, all those recordings of the dog talking those are actually clips from uh radio broadcasts he did like during the war <laughs> yeah. so just as soon as he finished with the fight them on the beaches stuff he'd go oh yes <laughs> yeah. we'll fight them on the beaches oh yes so prime minister churchill um how, uh, do you think the the war is going well oh yes oh yes and uh, is germany gonna win oh no 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 but we're gonna win yeah oh yes exactly that's and, how they did it yeah yeah just neatened up the audio and it was ready for advertising, yeah. car insurance, <laughs> <laughs> just as it was always intended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking him now uh, in the Signori Weaver role in Alien. Oh, yeah. Kind of running around in his pants, uh, being chased oh, yeah. by an alien. Oh, that scene at the end. Yeah. Oh. Um, or even he could play the alien. <laughs> 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 He's chasing Signori <laughs> Weaver. Either way works. That'd be quite a terrifying film. Oh. Just like this uh, this unsuspecting um, kind of like breach into this spaceship and these crew members are being like picked off one by one uh, by uh, one of our um, <laughs> greatest and most prominent leaders. 
Yeah. When he starts off in like the kind of chest uh, chest burster stage, is it literally just him, but very small? <laughs> yeah. Or does he it's... go through a similar kind of evolution? No, he looks, ex- he looks exactly as we know him, but he's just scaled down. <laughs> and he comes out and he's got his fingers up in a kind of V position as yeah, he comes out. Those are the first two. It's yeah. not the head that comes out. It's like a hand with two fingers. Exactly. Just like come yeah. up in the air. This little bald head comes out, sort of chubby, sort of sack of potato faced man pops out and screams. <laughs> Never have so many been killed by one prime minister in the vacuum of space. <laughs> that was the tagline uh, uh, for the film. Yeah, yeah. In space, no one can hear you fight them on the beaches. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he'd be, he'd be good with that. Or, you know, just sort of, uh, he opens up his horrific gaping mouth and it's just dripping with brandy <laughs> <laughs> as he goes to, to eat them. And instead of that weird kind of like plunger thing yeah. that comes out of his mouth, it's like another arm with like the two fingers coming out. It's just like poking people. <laughs> right Real, in the eye. Yeah. yeah. He's not cut his nails for a while. Yeah. And it's just like... Uh. <laughs> that Fifty Shades film. <laughs> I think... Playing yeah, I th- which role again? Well, I think that's an instance where he could play both roles. Mm. Like... Um, uh, Tom Hardy and Legend. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so I think he could play... He'd be very kind of like adept at playing uh, someone who's quite shy and submissive, but also playing the more kind of like um, mysterious, dark, uh, dominating uh, male role mm. in that film. It's very much like the relationship he had with Hitler. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's very uh, Fifty Shades of, of Grey, that whole kind of like uh, Second World War period. Mm. Mm. What do you think the reception would be to that film? Just basically... Two hours of essentially Churchill having sex with himself. I think as uh, a patriotic nation, I think as as Englishmen, we should all welcome it. Mm. I think as a patriotic nation, we've got to take it on board and we've got to enjoy it. Yeah, it's, it would be our duty to kind yeah. of go and see it and pay ticket price to. Oh, it's our national duty. Yeah, mm. pay over ticket price. Yeah, sort of donate a bit as we go in. Um, you know, maybe with a little bit of that goes to help for heroes. I don't know. <laughs> Like you pay a bit extra for the um, the three D glasses, even though it's a two D only release. Yeah, you know, just a bit of extra money, and you buy the large popcorn. It's what he would have wanted. Oh, he would have. Yeah, that's all he ate. Yeah, <laughs> he died brandy and, and large popcorns. Yeah, cigars, brandy, and large large power boxes of popcorn. Uh, yeah, yeah, the man after my own heart, really. Yeah, yeah. You say he's dead. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, he's checking. Just seeing if there's been any developments since we started recording. I uh, don't think so. I mean, like, uh, I don't know. Maybe he's uh, gone the way of Walt Disney and frozen himself. Or maybe he's gone the way of uh, Jabba the Hutt and frozen his em- enemies. Oh, Carbonite Hitler. <laughs> if you thought Hitler was bad enough. <laughs> you just wait till you've seen post-Carbonite Hitler. Yeah, he would be a bit livid. Come out and say, like, what year is this? Like 2017, mate. It's like, Fucking hell. I've been carbonite for a while. So like, yeah. So like, we 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 all thought you were dead. So like, have I been remembered fondly? <laughs> um, uh... Certain, you know, the community of uh, Charlottesville in America is a big fan. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they'd welcome him with open arms, I guess. Some of those yeah. people. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of. Uh, he's got fans in Argentina as well. Yeah. yeah. How would he? Uh, how would he be with like? Uh, how would he be with kids? I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know if he's a natural with kids or not. I'm sure he is. He's got like a kind of very paternal kind of vibe going. Yeah. No. Um, a kind of a, a lovable, huggable. Lovable rogue. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see him settling down. Yeah. No one ever really thinks about the years that were stolen from him. Yeah, he was he was definitely kind of like taken in his prime, I think. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean what was he was his fifties? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he had like decades left. All the things he missed. Mm. First man on the moon. Do you f- he would have loved the Beatles. I think he would have loved the Beatles. He would have loved <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, God. It's so, such a shame. Taken before his time. Mm. Who are we talking about again? Adolf Hitler. Yeah, I had a horrible feeling we were. <laughs> Imagine if um, 
Winston and Hitler had uh, swapped hairstyles. Hitler's bald. Winston's got the toothbrush, moustache, and the comb over. Right. That could have worked, couldn't it? Maybe that was what swung the war, actually. Mm. Well, it's a very striking because, look, isn't it? Because well, it's yeah. almost very... I mean, if it, if you ever see that moustache, that is just kind of like always what it is now. Mm. Yeah. I mean, maybe uh, Churchill won because he was quite aerodynamic without any hair. Could be. Whereas uh, Hitler was all sorts of hair blowing in his face and slowing him down and getting caught in his moustache. Yeah, kept on checking in the mirror. So I was like, have I got any like kind of chicken in my moustache? It's not conducive to winning a war, chicken in the moustache. No, exactly. I've always said that. I've always said that. When you said um, them swapping... Mm. I thought you were going to kind of like go into some kind of like Freaky Friday situation. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be a great film? Oh, that would be Could you imagine film. that? Like 1942, just like, yeah, they're, they're both kind of like, the, the, the setup is like they're both kind of at home. They, they, mm. Well, there would have been like a kind of two hours time difference. So maybe like one of them's up like a bit later than the mm. other, but they're both kind of like sat there looking at the moon. There's kind of like cuts between the pair of them, just like, oh, I'm just sick of this. Oh, I, I can't stand it. Oh, the other guy's got it so much easier than me. Yeah. And then it cuts to Hitler. It's just like, oh, I can't stand this. Oh, it's getting a bit out of hand, all this. Oh, Churchill's got this much better than I have. Oh, it's and so both. easy for him. Everyone loves him. And then at the same time, they both say, oh, I wish for just one day I could be him. And then the, cl <laughs> the clock strikes 12. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I guess in, in Germany, I guess it would. It's just strike. Well, maybe Churchill's clock's a bit wrong, so they both happen to strike twelve. Yeah, at exact that point. same time. And then a thunderbolt just kind of goes in the sky, <sighs> and then they have a good night's sleep, and then they wake up, and the next morning, and then Churchill's just kind of like, like he wakes up in uh, Berlin. Yeah, and he's like, uh, he has no idea what's happening. It's like, where the fuck am I? He wakes up draped under a Nazi flag, a swastika. <laughs> He's wearing his swastika pajamas. He does one of those He's like, like this isn't right. He does one of those comical double takes where it's like, whoa. <laughs> Someone comes in to wake him. And it's like, oh, the paper's my Fuhrer. And he's like, what? And he looks in a mirror. It's like, and then he does like the Home Alone. Oh! <laughs> Which can I say is my favourite thing from any film ever. <laughs> More films could do with a little kind of oh, like yeah. hands on the face scream I tell you at what, camera. I, I cannot think of a single film that would, would not be improved by more of that. Yeah, uh, Schindler's List. Much better. It would have been much better. I, it's it's, quite, I tell you what, there's a lot of very shocked and upset people in that film. It was quite horrific, so I'm sure that there were people who's, who did have that reaction. Yeah, oh, hands to the face, either mm. side, yeah. Macaulay Culkin kind of style. Absolutely. Any film could have done with that. Hmm. Goodfellas? Yeah. There are a couple of good fellas, those Culkin boys. Yeah, they are. Good fellas. I quite agree. So, yeah, Adolf wakes up in the war rooms, wherever it is that Churchill slept. Mm. He's in... He's probably not very happy with um, Ad uh, with uh, Churchill's body. I don't know. Y yeah, I mean, like, I'm not bigging the guy up. He, he was a nasty piece of work, but he looked... He, at least he kind of looked after himself. He looked good in the uniform. Yeah, he was he was good in a uniform. It was quite well fitting. Uh, whereas, yeah, I guess like he sees like he looks down at like essentially this sack of potatoes in front of him. It's just yeah. like, oh, God's sake. Uh, plus, he had to do all those uh, voiceovers for the adverts. That's right. Yeah, that took up a lot of his time, mm. and that's where it kind of gets to the point where maybe like in the third act of the film, they start to kind of like realize, you know what. I've walked a mile in another man's shoes. I now appreciate my situation a hell of a lot more. I want to go back. Yeah. Yeah. But instead of like um, to get home, you know, to their own bodies, instead of like uh, screaming at the moon, they have to do like uh, in What Women Want, where they have to uh, put on those uh, women's tights and makeup and get in a bath and accidentally electrocute themselves, just like Mel Gibson does in What Women Want. Yeah. Um, now, now, do they now? Would this be substituted by them dressing as themselves, or would they literally be dressing up as women and, as and women. electrocuting themselves? Dressing up as women and electrocuting themselves. <laughs> they yeah. just immediately assume that this is the way to get themselves <laughs> back to to how they were. Churchill, as Hitler, is plundering 
Eva Braun's makeup, tights, dressing gowns, those that, sorts of things. That could make for quite a nice little kind of funny scene uh, yeah, for yeah, the yeah. film. She's, she's like, uh, oh, Adolf, my darling, um, why are you uh, putting on my tights? This is uh, so unlike you. And likewise, you've got um, Hitler as Churchill. I think his wife was called uh, Clemmy. So, you know, Clemmy's like, uh, ah, you know, what's going on? You know, he's getting on my tights and uh, <laughs> wearing me makeup. So, yeah, and likewise, this, this scenario is flipped. They get in the bath, they electrocute themselves, and uh, both die. Mm. But, you know, only in a sort of like the way people die on the operating table, where they can die but come at, actually come back. So they both die, but then when they wake up, they're in the other, you know, their own original bodies. But then they're still sort of faced with the shame of the fact they wake up wearing tights and makeup, which is a very real feeling. I know the feeling myself, waking up from electrocution death uh, in tights and makeup. Yeah, common occurrence. It certainly is in this household. Well, I mean, I think I think we should pitch that idea. I, th- I think it's got a lot of uh, weight to it. I mean, it's a cross between Freaky Friday, the film Big... Uh, what Downfall. Women- Downfall. <laughs> and What Women Want. Yeah. Which I think Both is what everyone would want. Hugely successful films, each in their own right. Imagine combining all four of them. The critical acclaim of Downfall, the transvesticism of <laughs> what women want. <laughs> the uh, the long-lasting cult appeal of Big, and the uh, youth culture... Body swap p- phenomena that is Freaky Friday. Absolutely, yeah. Just yeah. them all. I'm thinking um, playing the body of Adolf Hitler, Joaquin Phoenix... And uh, playing Churchill, River Phoenix. <laughs> right, um, y- you know uh, River Phoenix is dead. What? Yeah. Has that... anyone told Joaquin? I, I hope so. Blimey. It'd be a bit of a shock. It was, just... a quite, it was quite some time ago, about 25 odd years ago. Mm, and news has probably reached him by now, hasn't it? I th- yeah. As long as he doesn't find out the way I found out. On a podcast, no. Yeah, yeah, that would be the worst. That's the worst way to find out any bad news. Yeah, that's true. Oh, do you know what, actually? Um, for Churchill, Christopher Lloyd. Right, okay. I mean, he really would need to put on weight because he's always been quite a, a skinny, gangly kind of guy anyway. Get him in a fat suit, by all means. I'm not, as a director... I'm not averse to getting anybody in a fat suit. In fact, if I did ever direct a film, I think I'd probably want everybody in a fat suit. Mm. And obviously, from behind the camera, I would be wearing a, a fat suit as well. No, of course, yeah, exactly. You, you can't. You got to lead by example. Yeah. Let's get Roger Deakins to do the cinematography. Mm. Hans Zimmer to do the score. Fat suit. Yeah. Um, who else? Um. D- oh, you're directing. Did you say? I'm directing. I'm afraid. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. Screenwriter, we could have uh, Charlie Kaufman. Mm-hmm. He could write it in a fat suit. Yeah. I think there's a lot of potential here. A lot of potential here with this film. Just all of the uh, <laughs> the kind of like titles at the end yeah. just have the word fat in there. Fat cinematographer, Roger Deakins. <laughs> <laughs> like the extras, like fat man, <laughs> fat man in, in background one. <laughs> fat, <laughs> fat postman, two. <laughs> fat key grip. Best fat boy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the sort of um, second act is going to be, you know, like where they're still sort of enjoying their, you know, they've come to terms with having woken up, you know, like uh, in Big, he wakes up, he has the initial shock and then he starts to enjoy it and he starts sleeping with a lot older women. Um, so what's going to be the kind of the equivalent of that for uh, Adolf and, uh, and, and Winnie? Well, you're going to have Winston in Hitler's body he could fuck he's going to he's going to be he's going to enjoy first of all i guess being in a slimmer body mm. although in our film everyone's wearing a fat suit so that might not translate quite so well if we just <laughs> not visually but i think people will understand <laughs> no people happening. will get the idea um, because winston will be in a fatter fat suit so right. it's like the proportions are still the same except everybody's fat right so the actor would have to put on weight and <laughs> have a fat suit or he'd have to wear two fat suits two i see i, I mean a minimum Minimum of two fat suits. Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd in a minimum of two fat suits. Right. Well, yeah, so Churchill would enjoy, like, when being in Hitler's body, he'd uh, be enjoying being in a, a younger, slimmer body. Um, He'd perhaps grow to really kind of, like, love the fearful respect mm. that the, the people had for him. Um, 
he'd enjoy um, strudel. <laughs> yeah. All the German desserts. Um, I can I can see him um, messing around with the goose step quite a lot. You know, yeah. some sort of um, march. You know, Nuremberg um, Cathedral of Light style. Um, you know, he's giving some great oration and uh, just sort of messing around with the goose step. Mm. You know, making it into a bit of a can can. Uh, possibly kind of flicking his shoes off as he does it. You <laughs> yeah. know, he hits Goebbels in the face. Uh, Goebbels doesn't quite know what to make of it. Um, yeah, something like that. Um, so I think we could kind of do an inception kind of thing in this film where we've got a second body swap between um, Hitler and Goebbels. Maybe for a sequel. Maybe there's like kind of like an after credits uh, in the. Uh in the end of the film where basically we have Goebbels just kind of like looking at like the Fuhrer sleeping and just thinking, oh, if only, if only I mm. had the same kind of authority and respect as he did. And then you just kind of like see like a, a panning shot of a clock and then it goes to midnight and, goes, and a black screen. Yeah. And then you're like, Oh, oh next so year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, problem with the sort of Hitler Goebbels body swap is there's less of a yin and yang in terms of, like, the good and bad. Yeah, they're both kind of pieces of shit. Yeah. Glad you said that, actually. You're right. You're right there. Someone needed to say Someone... something. <laughs> Someone needed to speak out. It's not right. They've gotten away with it for too long. Exactly. So what would uh, what would Hitler be getting up to in, in Churchill's body? Hold that thought. I just thought, instead of Joaquin Phoenix and Christopher Lloyd, the Wayans... Yeah. The Wayne brothers. Yeah, well, they have good screen, chem screen chemistry, I guess, yeah. They're brothers, did you know? What? <laughs> yeah, that's why they um, look so alike and get on very well. And, yeah, I guess that explains why they're called the Wayne brothers as well. <laughs> didn't <laughs> yeah, think of, didn't think of that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Hitler in uh, in Winston Churchill's body. I guess he'd be having roast dinners. I think he'd find a newfound respect for uh, mint sauce. Yeah. I think that would really that could be like the lesson he learns. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when he goes back to his own body, he kind of takes away a, a, a message, a lesson, if you will. And I think that could be what he takes away. So, like Win <laughs> Winston, Winston kind of like takes away. Basically, like it turns out, kind of on either side, we're human. We're all human. Mm. Um, although his ideals are different to mine. Um, I can see how he got to kind of like where he is now. Mm. Um, and we all, yeah, we're just kind of all trying in this world. And, and whereas Hitler, his, his take from the whole experience is, fucking hell, we need mint sauce in Germany. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. On our strudel, on our, yeah. <laughs> um, on our bratwurst. Yeah. All sorts. Yeah. Although I, I, I feel morally, I'm not sure it should be a level playing field at the end. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just, just a thought. Got to give both sides. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very um, BBC approach to the matter. Exactly. It was like a, a BBC film. Maybe we could do it in claymation, like a Wallace and Gromit style. Get Ardman animation in. Yeah. And then Christopher Lloyd and Joaquin Phoenix, who just do the voices. And then probably, actually, oh, think of the money we'd save on fat suits. Exactly, yeah, just like lots of clay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sink all the fat suit money into clay. <laughs> So there we go. Um, the ins and outs, the history and life of Winston Winnie Churchill. Winnebago man. <laughs> Winnebago Churchill. Winnebago Church. As we all know him. Yeah. Mm. Um, any sort of final words to uh, to say on him? Well, um, I've learned a lot that I didn't know before about the man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just I just think it would be nice uh, because he, he is a national treasure, that man. And I think it would be nice for, for people to hear about him in a, in a different light than, than we're used to hearing him. So hopefully this this prod podcast has uh, shed some light on uh, some of the areas perhaps that he's not uh, not so well known for. Yeah, I mean, I feel like a lot of what we discussed was quite hypothetical, but um, it's it's good, a different a different perspective, as you say. Yeah, for sure. Um, we, but... <sighs> National treasure status. Is he up there with Stephen Fry and Mary Berry? Or do you think he's sort of a bit lower down the scale? Um, I'm waiting on a comeback uh, to see what he might bring to the table mm. next to before he can kind of beat Mary Berry, perhaps. Yeah. Um, She's but, older. Although she he is. did die at age 90. That's true. 
But he wasn't still on television, age 90. No. That's what matters. Mm. That's it, exposure. It's all about exposure these days. Mm. Stephen Fry has been on television since he was in his 20s. I, I don't think Winston Churchill really had that level of, uh, uh, of a te- television career. Didn't have a t- television when he was in his 20s. Couldn't afford one. Lazy git. Yeah, he couldn't. If only he got out and done some bloody work. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been down the mines, yeah. earning money. Exactly. Yeah. Lazy sod. Well, I think that's the final word on the Churchill. <laughs> Lazy sod. Lazy sod. We'll leave it at that. So and we're not going to do a fucking two Ronnies ending this time. So goodbye. Toodles. Okay. <laughs>